All right, so we're going to get started. If you're still working on the quiz, I can keep doing it, wrap it up as soon as you can. So today we're going to be talking about the pelvis and the hip and the muscles of the thigh. So we're not going to be doing any of this. Uh, not going to be doing any pelvic uh, elbow dancing, but we're already talking about the hip and the pelvis. Okay. So, what are the bones that make up the pelvis? That's also called the pelvic, also the pelvic girdle. So it's basically where it comes off of the sacrum. You have the innominate bones and then you have the femur. And then that's basically what we're going to be talking about today. So we'll review some of the bony landmarks. So, this here? Sacrum. Sacrum. Right. And then. This part of the pelvic bone is what? The neck crest. The neck crest, right? And then you have down here? Ilium. Ischium. Uh, ischium. As in ischial tuberosity. And then that leaves us with what? What's this bone here? And then what's this called right here? The <laughs> synthesis of this would be what bone? Pubis. How do you know this stuff? So basically these two large either halves of the pelvis are either called the innominate bones or the os coxae. Right? And they're gonna there's what's gonna there's the junction between the sacrum or the axial skeleton and the femur or the leg. Or the thigh, I guess we should say. And then the, the ilium is a larger flared up flaring bone that's up on the top here. This forms the iliac crest up top. So that when you put your hands on your hips, so to say, you're really putting them on the iliac crest. Okay. And then on the interior surface, it's going to articulate with the sacrum. Okay. So this is the sacroiliac joint. It's this L-shaped articular surface. And then the marking on here is going to be the iliac crest. Across here, and then this is the anterior side because this is where the pubic is. So, what's this called right here? Anybody remember? The anterior superior iliac spine, and then right, the ASIS. And then, then you're going to have what's going to have on, right underneath that. If this is anterior superior, then this is going to be what? Anterior inferior, right? And so, then this would be what? Posterior superior, PSIS, and then the PIIS. Okay. So then you have the greater sciatic notch, which is here, and then the lesser sciatic notch here. So now we're getting into the issue. Okay. So you have the initial spine, right? That's that little point that sticks out here. And that divides the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch. Then you have the iliac fossa on this side here. So that's on the medial side, so that's going to be on this side here, on the inside edge of the ilium. Right. And then, the pelvic brim is what comes around here. That's coming around towards the front. And then, like I mentioned, you have the four different spines. You have the PSIS, PIIS, ASIS, AIIS. Does everybody understand those? Right? So then, we're moving down into the ischium. And then that's the most prominent thing on that's going to be the initial tuberosity, right? Those are what you call your sit bones. Right? So you're sitting down, you're sitting on your initial tuberosity. 
Pom 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 So then, again, we're going to have the initial spine down here, and then the lesser sciatic notch down here, and the initial tuberosity. And then that leaves us with the pubis bone, which is the bone on the front, right here. So you have the pubic tubercle on the crest, the pubic arch, Along the front here, the pubic symphysis is the actual place where there's a disc, a fibrocartilage disc. And then you have this obturator foramen. Okay? That's this opening here in the pelvis. And that part of that's on the pubic bone, and part of that's on the issue. So this opening here, we'll talk later about different obturator muscles that are going to attach on that obturator foramen. So now we'll talk a little bit about the difference between the male and the female pelvis. Okay. So obviously the female pelvis is going to be built more for ch carrying children, so that it's going to have a wider pelvic inlet or uh, pelvic rim. Uh, right. So there's just some basic general characteristics. It's a little bit tilted forward. And then the male pelvis is going to be built a little bit heavier and stronger to support the heavier torso. So there's different views that you can see. And then there's a little chart. I think that's in your notes too, right? Yes. I mean, it doesn't come up that much as far as the clinical stuff. I mean, obviously, but you just understand the difference between the pelvis. Where it's going to come into play is when we talk more down into the knees, we talk about the Q angle, and that has to do with how far the femur is out from the pelvis when it comes in at an angle like that. We'll talk more about that later, but obviously the female pelvis is going to have wider hips, and so it's going to affect the angles going into the knee. So here's just more differences. You can see obviously that there's a wider opening in the female pelvis versus in the male pelvis, which makes sense. All right, so now we're talking about the lower limb or the lower extremity. So it's going to be divided into three different parts. Okay, so before you, before you study anatomy, you just said leg, okay? We just called this the leg. Okay, but now we're going to be more specific so that we all speak the same language so we know what we're talking about. When we talk about this, what are we going to use? What word are we going to use for here? Thigh. Thigh, and then what's this? Leg. Leg, and then foot. So you have the thigh, the leg, and the foot. And that's going to carry the weight of the body. So now we get into the femur. All right, so it has some similarities to when we were talking about the humerus. So what's this going to be up here? The head. The head of the femur. And then what's under the head? The neck. The neck. And then here you can have these two. On the shoulder, on the humerus, we had two tuberosities. But now we're moving things up, up a scale. So now they're called trochanters. Okay? So they're a little bit bigger, so they're called trochanters. And then you have greater trochanter and lesser trochanter. In this case, they're kind of more on opposite sides of the femur. On the shoulder, the two tuberosities were kind of close to each other. Here you've got the greater tuberosity on the lateral side of the femur, and then the lesser tuberosity is more on the inside. Okay. So as you can imagine, the greater tuberosity is going to be a lot of things that are going to attach on there that are going to abduct the hip. Okay. So then you're going to have an intertrochanteric line, which is going to just go right <coughs> through the two trochanters. And then you have the fovea capitis, which is this little hole at the very end, tip of the head of the femur. And there's going to be some structures that are going to go through there, like the ligament and blood vessels. And you have this gluteal tuberosity down here. Okay, coming down below the intertrochanteric line, you have the gluteal tuberosity, which is where the glute max and it's where the gluteal muscles are going to attach to. Because basically, on these spots on the bone where you have little ridges and enlargements, those are primarily for what? 
まあそうです